In this video, we'll be using the Gradient Mesh tool and the Pen tool to recreate a photograph. Uh, so to begin, I already have a, an 8.5 by 11 document set up here in Illustrator. I'm going to go ahead and um, place an object. So I'm going to choose File, Place. And I've already found a photograph. This photograph came from a website called Morgue File. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to double check down here. Uh, I want to uncheck the link box. This will actually embed the photograph in my Illustrator document. It's going to make the document a little bit bigger, but it will also um, keep the document and the photograph together so that if I move it to a different computer, I still have that um, photograph available. The next thing I'm going to do is check the box called Template. Uh, this will create a template layer rather than a regular layer and it will reduce the opacity. It will make it a non-printing layer. We'll take a look at that in just a second. I'm going to go ahead and click place and there is my document. So now in my layers panel I have this template layer. I can tell it's a template layer because it has this uh, different icon than we're used to seeing and it is not full value and it's automatically locked. I'm going to go ahead and unlock it and I'm going to come look at panel options. This is from the flyout menu in the upper right hand corner and actually I'm going to click cancel, wrong one. I want to choose the options for this template layer and when I do we'll notice a couple things. Number one, it gives the, the name of the file uh, it is a template layer, so that box is checked. And I'm going to uncheck it so that all, we can see all these things for just a second. Notice the options I have are to lock the layer and this print option. If I uncheck that box, and notice when I check the template layer, the print box automatically unchecks. That makes it a non-printing layer. And so when I go to print this document out, the photograph will not show up. Um, so that's kind of important. And the template by default is dimmed to 50% of the opacity. This is not a big deal. Um, we'll actually be using colors directly from this image at full value shortly. But just know that um, Illustrator knows that it's been reduced. And when you use the eyedropper tool on a template layer, it will pull up the color at full value. So I'm going to go ahead and click OK. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom out just a little bit so that we can, I'm using uh, the command key and the minus key or the control key and the minus key to zoom out. And I'm going to unlock that template layer, grab my image. I'd like to reduce it down to the size of my document. And I'm just going to hold the shift key and scale that image down. so that it fits right there on my artboard. And now that I have it sized the way I like it, I'm going to go ahead and lock that layer again and use Command-0 to zoom in and fill my space. So now that I have my um, template set up and I'm ready to go. So I'm going to use the pen tool P is the hotkey for the pen tool. I'm going to make sure that I'm on layer one and I'm just going to trace the shapes that create this bell pepper. Um, now the thing I'm going to keep in mind is what shape is going to be on top. I typically design from the top down and then rearrange my layers. Uh, it might be easier for you to design from the bottom up, but We'll just start from the top here. And I actually do go ahead and leave the default fill and stroke on my shape here. So I have a white fill. Won't be a big deal because we're going to change it here in a minute. The other thing that, that I do when I design like this is I actually um, build in small shapes because by building in small shapes, gives me much more control over the um, location of the gradient mesh that I'm going to build here in a minute. 
than if I I'm going to get the uh, anchor point and control tool here real quick convert that anchor point to a point uh, it gives me more, more control than if I try and build all of the red area simultaneously move this point just a little bit here and now I'm going to move on to the next path in my uh, outline here one thing that is very handy in this type of work is to toggle between the outline mode and the preview mode this menu option lives under the view menu it's the very first option uh, and the hotkey for that is command Y or control Y so now I'm in outline mode I know I'm in outline mode because the uh, icon in my layers panel shows just the outline of an eye and and the center part is no longer there so the next thing I'm going to do is come work on this shape here and the nice part about this is I don't have to worry about the area that's going to overlap here so I'll just start inside that overlapping area pull out my shape here and then I'm just going to close that path off come work on the next lobe here and I'm going to use my direct selection tool to move this in, tweak it just a little bit. The direct selection tool, the hot key for that tool is the letter A. And now I'm going to go back to my pen tool. The hot key for the pen tool, of course, is the letter P. And we'll work on this one here. Again, any of these paths um, can overlap. It'll help with a more fluid transition of color, but I don't have to worry so much about the interior portion. And my last lobe here. tweak the path just slightly. I'm going to come down here. I have a spot where they're overlapping in a way that I'm not happy with. Beauty of Illustrator is I can fix that. I'm again going to use the anchor point tool so that I can tweak that anchor point and pull that curve control handle back a little bit. and now I have the outline of my bell pepper sections so I um, am actually gonna layer this bell pepper and then I'm gonna make another layer I'm gonna lock the bell pepper layer turn off the visibility now I'm gonna work on the stem and so the stem for this particular piece will have several uh, different shapes to it I'm going to start with the shadow back here and again because that shape is one that is not um, that's going to be overlapped by part of the stem I don't have to worry about it quite so much I'm going to go ahead and close that spot off then I'm going to grab my direct selection tool. Hot key for that is the letter A. 
Eh, actually, I think I'm going to use my convert anchor point tool. So that would be uh, Shift C is the hotkey for that tool so that I can pull this down in and line it up real nice right there. So there's my shadow. The next uh, pen tool is P. I'm going to grab the pen tool again. Next piece I'm going to do is this stem base. I'm going to alt click on this anchor point and that's going to get rid of that handle there so I can control that curve all by itself from there. Oh, I don't want to draw that out yet. So um, I'm going to come back here and I am going to um, use the alt key. Actually, I think I can And I'm going to delete that. Well, we'll come put another point over here and then we'll worry about that one. Sometimes we make a spot that we didn't mean to and we just go back and fix it. It's the beauty of Illustrator. Nothing's permanent. So now I'm going to grab my uh, direct selection tool and we'll pull this down in here. This is behind the stem so I'm not real concerned about the placement. And I'm going to come tweak this angle here. And there we have a reasonable um, facsimile of the base of this pepper. And last but not least we have the stem. So I'll get my pen tool again. Come right in here. Draw in the curves of the base. Draw out the nice neck. come finish our base. Again I'll grab the direct selection tool so I can move some of these points around, clean up the curve. I know some people are really good at drawing this right the first time. I'm not one of them. I have to come back in and clean it up. And if you and if that's your situation that is a okay. You wouldn't be alone. Going to get our anchor point tool. Come pull that down a little bit. So now I have a stem I'm pretty happy with. So I'm going to go ahead and layer this stem. And I think I'm even going to go a little farther and come in and, and name these paths. So my first path, that's our shadow. Uh, the next path up is the base. And last but not least is the actual stem. So there is our our outlines for this bell pepper. So I'm going to go ahead and zoom all the way back out, fit our artboard in the window, turn all of our layers back on, and come up to preview mode and what we'll notice is that now I have a bell pepper that that basically is completely covered. We have a little bit of shadow down here that we'll play with in a minute 
and I feel like I'm, I'm pretty comfortable with uh, what we've got. So I'm going to go ahead and lock the stem and um, in the next video we'll come back and start to add color to our bell pepper. Again, there's the outline.